Another focus for Vietnam right now is the development of the domestic semiconductor industry. More specifically, the human resources needed for the sector income the program on development of human resources for the semiconductor industry through 2030 with orientations toward 2050, aims to fully meet Vietnam's demand for both in the quantity and quality of human resources in the semiconductor industry across all stages of the value chain. This is the strategic of the move to position Vietnam as a key player in the global semiconductor supply chain. Yes, and uh, the way this move is manifesting in real life is uh, the prioritization of state budget to 18 universities uh, to establish and upgrade semiconductor laboratories as an effort towards providing at least 50,000 personnel in the field. Our reporter went to one of these institutions to take a closer look. Each chip of the smart devices that we use need to pass the testing of this equipment set, which costs about 75,000 US dollars. And Hanoi University of Industry expects to receive nearly 2 million US dollars from the government preferential package for 2026 alone to upgrade and buy more facilities like this. Besides institutions investment and support, the annual growth rate of 14% over the past two decades, along with expectations of continued strong growth reaching 1 trillion US dollars by 2030, has become a driving force for more students to pursue semiconductor related majors. Well, in general, uh, the students in Hanoi University of Industry we have our first opportunity in the sophomore year since we start our minor projects under the guidance of our lecturers. And we also have the opportunity to contact and work with other experts in the fields of semiconductors. For more than 10 years now, Foscon, FII, and Hanoi University of Industry have cooperation on training and recruiting high quality engineers, students who enroll in semiconductor related major can have hands-on experience at our company or become our interns. The current 170 FDI projects with a total capital of nearly 11.6 billion US dollars also demonstrates the confidence of the private sector in investing in Vietnam's semiconductor sector in general and human resource development in particular. Thus has provided valuable insights into ongoing efforts and the outlook appears promising for achieving the target of 50,000 semiconductor personnel. Well, it certainly gives solidity to uh, uh, the hope of achieving this target. Now, however, 50,000 personnel is still a staggering number, especially it has to be completed by 2030. Now, to ascertain the feasibility of this goal, we turn to Dr. Pham Sun Tang, Chair of Semiconductor Integrated Circuit Bachelor's Program at Hanoi University of Industry. Now, thank you so much for joining us. And we took a trip to your university in the previous story and talked to these students as well as businesses. Now, in your opinion, what are the crucial factors to provide 50,000 personnel according to decision 1017. Thank you for inviting me. Regarding your question, I think there are significant advantages at present. These include strong government commitment and a growing demand for human resources in this industry, driven by the existing global supply chain which has led many major semiconductor companies to invest in Vietnam. Moreover, Vietnam has a wide university network with around 40 institutions offering semiconductor training, including Hanoi University of Science and Technology, Hanoi University of Industry, Vietnam National University Ho Chi Minh City, and Ho Chi Minh City University of Technology. In addition, the industry is also facing a shortage of lecturers, experts, and facilities at these training institutions. The scale of specialized semiconductor training programs at universities is relatively small, and there is a high risk of brain drain as talented students and lecturers may choose to study and work abroad where opportunities are more suitable. 
Right. What measure do we need to realize the goal of providing 50,000 semiconductor personnel as stated in Decision 1017? For this question, I think that in order to achieve the goal of training 50,000 semiconductor professionals as set out in Decision 1017, we have already addressed several issues. First, we need to organize specialized training courses on semiconductor research for lecturers at companies or universities in developed countries, such as South Korea and Japan. Second, we need to invest in modern specialized laboratories for microchips, such as chip design and simulation software and high performance computing systems. For this, the government has policies to invest in modern laboratories for 18 universities, including Hanoi University of Industry. First, we need to create a modern working environment. When universities have modern facilities and a modern working environment, students and researchers won't need to go abroad to look for development opportunities, or if they've already studied internationally, they'll want to come back to the country. Well, thank you, Dr. Fan Sun Tang. We really appreciate your insights.